with Xfinity. We're now on breaking news in Donald Trump's classified documents case. Another delay from Judge Eileen Cannon today, hours after Trump's legal team asked for a stay and sought once again to have the charges dismissed. Joining me now, Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Trump's home district of Palm Beach County, Florida, and our really good friend. Here we go, Dave. I mean, this probably does not surprise you, right, given that this judge has been widely criticized for slow walking this case. But she's giving both sides more time to respond to the Supreme Court ruling that granted Trump the broad immunity. Do you now expect her to dismiss, or is she going to try to separate official and unofficial acts? Good to be back with you, Alex. If Judge Cannon does try to dismiss charges against Donald Trump, she'll be immediately appealed to the 11th Circuit. She would probably be reversed and could be eventually removed from the case. So she's going to tread very carefully. But delay is her middle name. I mean, she will continue to slow walk this case. She'll continue to err on the side of delay and to indulge the former president with every request. And so, yes, this decision by the Supreme Court on immunity will further delay the documents case, which is the strongest case against Donald Trump. But this case was never going to be heard before the election anyway. So based on the immunity ruling, Dave, what aspects of the Mar-a-Lago case do you anticipate being thrown out? Oh, well, I don't think anything in the Mar-a-Lago documents case will be thrown out. It should not be thrown out because the behavior was after he left the White House. Like, he has no more ability to keep documents after he leaves the White House, these classified documents, as he does to keep Air Force One. And if you actually think about it like that, Trump's argument is that, well, I was allowed to keep the documents. It's part of my core constitutional functions. So therefore, I get immunity for keeping the documents after I leave the White House. Well, what if he stole Air Force One? He was allowed to use it while he was president. Hmm. If he continued to use it after he left, he would be arrested for it. So it's the same thing with the documents. So his argument, I think, is ridiculous because it all took place after he left the Oval Office, whether you're talking about the unlawful retention of the documents or the obstruction. So I don't think he has a chance. Now, it will delay matters down here in South Florida, but ultimately he's going to lose if that ever goes to trial. Yeah, I like the Air Force One analogy. I was speaking with Joyce Vance about this, and we kind of we, we came to an agreement that it's like um, he's allowed to take the documents, but he can't keep them. Like he's allowed to use Air Force One, but not keep it. That's pretty much how you That's see right. it, if you want to be really simple. Okay, um, let's move to Trump's lawyers, who made another pretty big move, citing Justice Clarence Thomas, who wrote in his concurring opinion about the appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. Of course, that wasn't even part of the issue before the Supreme Court. But it is among the motions before Judge Cannon, Dave. So how do you think she's going to handle that? I think Judge Cannon is going to be very careful before ruling that the special counsel is unconstitutional. That would contradict other courts. And again, that would get her appeal to the 11th, 11th Circuit, Circuit and possibly, okay. yeah, not only reversed, but removed from the case. And we're talking about Clarence Thomas. Remember, that's the Supreme Court justice whose wife was involved with January 6th, who shouldn't be part of these decisions to begin with. So yet he will continue to rule. And he's on the extreme side of the court. He was the only one who ruled uh, in the Rahimi case that a person who possesses a gun, even if you have a domestic violence injunction against you, that you can continue to possess a gun. Eight to one was a decision. So he is an outlier. So whether just Judge Cannon wants to uh, rely on Justice Thomas for her rulings just shows that she would be totally out of touch and be risking a severe reversal and repudiation and embarrassment by the 11th Circuit. Okay, let's go to Judge Marchand, who, of course, in the hush money case, who's already set aside Trump's sentencing hearing. That should have taken place this coming Thursday. It's been punted now to September, mid-September. Do you think the immunity ruling will affect any of the evidence that secured the hush money conviction? Will any of that be overturned? I don't think so. And I'm not trying to be a Pollyanna here. I think just, Judge Marchand is right to delay the matters and to look into it. But we're talking about the evidence while Trump was in the White House, whether it was the tweets he sent out or his communications with Hope Hicks. But none of that involved official acts. Tell me how a paying off a porn star to help you get elected is an official act of the presidency, right? I mean, this pertains yeah, more yeah. to 
Yeah, this pertains more to him being an office seeker, not an office holder. So I think that Judge Mershon will go through the process. And by the way, uh, Trump can't even make these arguments because he waived them when he didn't bring them up originally. Uh, but even if Judge Mershon goes through the arguments, he's going to deny it and then will eventually work its way back up to the Supreme Court. The biggest impact the court's decision on immunity will have on Trump's or criminal cases will be just delaying them. I don't think they will result in dismissing any of these cases. Hmm. Well, that is, of course, from the Trump Playbook 101. Anyway, okay, my friend, Dave Berenberg, always good to see you. Thank you much. A reformist wins Iran's presidency. The implications for Israel, the war with Hamas, and the U.S. next.